Hey what's up, this is Caleb Ward with PremiumBeat.com and in this After Effects tutorial I'm going to show you how to create this Doctor Strange inspired shield technique in only a matter of minutes. Okay, cool. So before we hop in, I want to encourage you to go download the free project files and assets over at premiumbeat.com. You'll find a link to the blog post in the description below. So whenever you download the file, it will pop up as a series of folders and project files. So inside of the download folder, you'll see a project file that says final comp, which is the final composition that we're looking at now and you'll see the Doctor Strange for tutorial After Effects project file. We're gonna use this tutorial project file for the remainder of our video. So go ahead and double click on it. Hit okay. All right, and we're in. So right off the bat, you can see here, we have Doctor Strange himself with the red cape and the flip down here. And he just kind of puts his hand up in the air and activates the mandala and then pulls his hand away. So. What we have in the composition here is just a motion tracked null object that just kind of follows his hand. Excellent, so let's get started. So go to composition, new composition, and we're gonna call this circle texture, and we'll make it 10 seconds long and okay. So go to your text tool here, and we're just gonna click right here in the middle, make sure that our paragraph is set to center, and I'm just gonna hit a bunch of random letters here. I'm just gonna keep Typing, 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 typing. Okay, cool. So go ahead and select all of these letters and the font we're gonna be using is really confusing to say. So I just wanna show you here. It is called Devoiken, which I believe is some sort of video game term or something like that. But you can find a link to the font download in the download folder. So go ahead and click on the font and we're gonna go ahead and scale this down. Maybe pretty significantly right about there. I'm just going to hit copy and click in and paste just to fill the entire frame here. And we're going to go ahead and center this up. So I'm going to go to the proportional grid and just center this right in the middle of our composition. Excellent. So let's go ahead and duplicate this text and I'm going to drag it down here and I'm going to scale it down to right about here. I'm going to double click inside, hit copy, click away and paste. We're just going to make these just kind of text stripes and I'm going to duplicate it one more time. And this one I'm going to drag down to right about here, and I'll scale it down even more, maybe right about there. Cool. So let's go to Layer New Solid, and we'll call this Stripe, and we'll set it to white. Hit OK and OK. So go ahead and scale this down. You want it to be really small. and. We can zoom in here and just scale it down even more. Basically, we just want there to be a lot of super small detail. So I'm gonna duplicate this by hitting Command D and I'll just drag this on top. Hit Command D again to duplicate. Just make some double vertical lines here and hit Command D one more time. We're gonna drag this down and I think I want this line right here to be super, super small. So I'm gonna zoom in here, just grab the edges, make just a real tiny line here duplicate that and drag it down one more time. So we have five lines total, creating this just cool circular texture. Excellent, so let's create another new composition. We'll hit Command N and we'll call this Mandala and hit OK. So to create the Mandala, we're just gonna drag down the circle texture into the Mandala composition. Go to the Effects and Presets browser and type in Polar Coordinates. And Polar Coordinates is basically gonna turn this rectangle texture into a circular object. And so I'm gonna change this to rect to polar and turn the interpolation up to 100%. And as you can see, we have this cool circular texture now. So now it's time to work on the shape inside of the mandala in the very middle here. So I'm gonna right click down here in our timeline, go to new shape layer. And this shape layer is gonna be fairly complex, so just uh, follow along and you can pause the video at any time if you need uh, just a quick breather to catch up. So go to add poly star, and we're gonna make this poly star three points. And instead of a star, we're gonna set it to polygon. So we have this triangle right here. And I'm gonna to go to add rectangle, and we'll go ahead and just scale up this rectangle here. So just scale up the size. Excellent, and you can see that the triangle isn't exactly centered, so I'm gonna go in and adjust the position here just to where it's right in the middle. 
maybe right about there. Cool. And let's go ahead and create an ellipse. So we'll create an ellipse here and we're going to scale this ellipse up to where it's just a little bit bigger than the square. And let's create another new poly star. And we can go ahead and scale up this poly star. So we'll scale up the outer radius and the inner radius to create just this cool octagon shape here. And let's throw in one more shape. Let's say one more poly star. And I'm going to turn down the radius here. So maybe to right about there and turn down the outer radius to about like that. Cool. So now we have this shape layer here to give it some dimension. We're going to go to stroke, just add a stroke. So now you can see there's just these light stroke lines here in the middle. And these lines are a little bit thick compared to the outer ring here. So you could go to the stroke and change it to one. Cool. And now we're going to be using one of my favorite effects inside of After Effects, the repeater. So just go to the add and find the repeater and hit the drop down menu for the repeater and go to transform. And we're going to set the position to zero, but the rotation we're going to set to 30%. And now we can go in here and just duplicate the copies until they fill the entire circle. So at 30%, it would take 12 copies. So let's go ahead and create 12 copies and click away. Excellent. So now you can see we have this highly detailed mandala. And the cool thing about the repeater effect and using this technique is you can actually go in now and adjust your layers as you see fit. And you can create just further complexity depending on the look you're going for. For the sake of our composition, I think this is looking pretty good. Now it's time to adjust the scale. So move forward about four frames, and you can see here on the left, we're at four frames. Select both of the objects, hit S for scale, and set a keyframe. Then move forward to the very beginning and just set the scale to zero. So now they scale up. Excellent. So go ahead and select the last keyframe on both of these layers and go to the graph editor. So now we can create just a hill here so if we kind of zoom in here so we can see what's going on we're going to create just this kind of arch just like that just to create like this slope to where it kind of just hops on real quickly but it kind of just slowly fades in at the very end here so we can just drag this as we need and drag these out maybe to about five frames right about there and let's move forward to two seconds and 14 frames, set another keyframe for the scale at 100%, move forward two frames, and we're gonna move the scale back down to zero. So basically the object scales up and scales down. Excellent, so now it's time to give this shape just a little bit more animated properties. So I'm gonna select our circle texture here, hit the R key for rotation, set a keyframe at the very beginning, and let's move forward to right after it animates off, and just set the rotation to 90%. So now if we scrub through here, you can see it kind of rotates. And I'm gonna go into our shape layer here and go to just our different shapes. And I'm gonna set keyframes for the very beginning. So let's set a keyframe perhaps for this rectangle size and then move forward to the very end and set a keyframe to where the rectangle is maybe a little bit smaller, right about there, or perhaps maybe a little bit bigger, right about there. We can just go ahead and move this past the point where it animates off. And so now if we scrub through, we can see this rectangle just kind of gets a little bit bigger. And perhaps we want to keyframe the roundness. So we could keyframe at the very beginning for zero, move forward and set the roundness to, I don't know, like 20. And so as we scrub through, you can see the rectangle shape just kind of changes. It's just kind of giving it a little bit more life. And then, you know, you could do the same thing for this outer star here. So we went to the poly star number two and set a keyframe at the very beginning for the inner and outer radius. You could go in and just kind of scale it, let's say down and up to where as the composition moves, it just kind of scales up. Excellent. So that's pretty good. That's a good amount of animation. We don't want it to be too distracting. So let's go back over to our final comp and drop in our mandala. So go ahead and move forward to the 15 frame mark. It's so right here. And this is the point at which we want the mandala to animate in. So we can just go ahead and grab the end here 
it's right about here. And we're going to parent this mandala to the tracked null object. So now if we do this and scrub through, we can see that it is tracked to his hand. So now we can simply grab it and position it to where it's perfectly where we want it. Cool, so about like that, and go ahead and toggle the 3D, and we'll just change the rotation here to match just kind of his hand. Go ahead and scale it up. Excellent, so now let's add in some colorization effects. So I'm gonna to go to the effects and preset browser, and I'm gonna type in fractal noise, and I'm gonna drop it onto the mandala here. And let's go ahead and turn up the contrast pretty significantly. We want it to be basically just black and white, just like this. And I'm going to go in now and change the scale. I'm gonna scale it down to about, let's say 20, about like that. And I'm gonna to go to the effects browser here and type in roughen edges and just drop it onto the mandala here. And then let's turn down the scale so we can just see more detail here. I'm gonna turn down the scale to about say 20 and then we're going to turn down the border to about 0.2 excellent so let's go to the effects and presets browser and drop on a glow effect and change the original colors to a b colors and we're going to change color a to you guessed it just kind of a green and color b will change to green as well it's right about there so we can now go in and turn up the threshold right about there and turn up the radius and you can turn up the intensity just to wherever you like it let's say about 1.7 and go ahead and duplicate that glow effect and we're going to turn that threshold down to about 80 and we'll turn the radius up just even more excellent so right about there and then I'm actually going to turn down the intensity about 1.5 and we can do the same for the previous glow we basically want it to be green, but we don't want it to be over the top. Excellent. So go to the effects and preset browser and type in tent, and this is going to be the final effect that we use, and drop it onto the mandala. And we're going to change the black to just a bright green, somewhere right about here. And the white we're going to change to maybe a little bit more of a turquoise right about there. Excellent. So go ahead and change the transfer mode to add. And now it'll interact with the background just a little bit more. And I'm going to hit T for opacity and turn down the opacity to, oh, let's say about 60%. Right about there to where, you know, you can see his hand through it. So now let's add in some extra elements into our scene. So I'm going to go to Layer, New, Solid. And I'm going to select just kind of a bright green right here. And we'll call this Glow and hit OK. So let's go in, hit T and turn down the opacity and then I'm going to select the pen tool up here and just kind of cut out just kind of a warped shape about like that hit F for opacity and just feather it out and we'll change the transfer mode to add as well hit T and just kind of turn it up right about there basically we just want to make it look like this mandala is glowing and it's super bright and there's just like a little bit of extra light spillage over here Excellent, excellent. So I'm gonna hit T for opacity on the mandala here and I'm gonna turn it down a little bit more to right about there and I'm gonna duplicate it actually and I'm gonna move it over to the side just a little bit, just to right about there to where if you zoom in here you can see we're getting this duplicate effect here and I'm gonna change the one on top to overlay. So now if you hit T and turn up the opacity you can see that there's just kind of some fringing going on here and this is just gonna make it look a little more realistic and then we can change the glow opacity down just a little bit. We want it to glow, but we don't want it to be over the top. So maybe about like that. And let's make sure that our glow layer is set to 3D. Now go to Layer, New, Camera. And we'll just do a 50 millimeter camera, hit OK. And this camera, we're actually going to go to the camera options and turn depth of field on. So basically we wanna match the same blurriness as his hand here. So I'm gonna change our focus distance and just kinda of turn it up to about, let's say 5,000 and we'll turn up the aperture to about 174. And now if you zoom in here, you can see that the blurriness just kind of matches his hand. Excellent, so this is looking good, but I can see there's a line here uh, that splits the mandala right in half. And the reason why this is, is because the glow layer does not have the same rotation as the mandala layer. So I'm gonna select the glow, hit R for rotation, set the Y rotation to six, and then I'm just gonna push it back in 3D space just a little bit. 
to where it's behind the mandalas and we don't have to worry about it intersecting ever. And I'm going to set a keyframe at, let's say, 18 frames. I'm going to hit T for opacity and set a keyframe for the opacity of the glow. I'm going to move forward to where the mandala is not on screen and set the opacity to zero. So now we see here, Doctor Strange just kind of makes the mandala up here and it starts glowing and then it animates away and I'll set a keyframe at three seconds, move forward until the mandala is gone and turn the opacity down to zero. So now if we scrub through here, we can see the mandala pops on, it fades away and his hand goes away. Excellent, this is looking awesome, but one thing I can see here that would take it over the top is if we threw in a cool lens flare element. So I'm gonna go to our video folder here and drop in a radium lens flare from our friends over at rocketstock.com. And radium is just a cool pack of 4K anamorphic lens flares. And unlike other plugins that are out there, these lens flares are actually organic and were really shot in camera. So they just have that kind of visual tenacity to them that other lens flare packs don't have. So if you go ahead and hit S for scale, you can scale this down to where it kind of fills up the whole frame. And then we'll set the transfer mode to add. And you don't want it over his eyes here, so we'll go ahead and scale these up to where basically it's just kind of popping up here and down here. And I'm going to go to our effects and presets browser and type in tritone and drop it onto the radium lens flare. And go ahead and change your midtones to just a green color, about like that. And we can change the blend with original to, let's say, about 50%. About like that and then hit T for opacity and just turn down the opacity to where you know they're in the frame but they're not like taking up the entire frame so this is looking pretty cool but one thing I can see here is the fact that we're gonna want to make this look cinematic so go ahead and go to layer new solid and make the solid black and we'll call the solid letter box and hit OK so go ahead and turn on your proportional grid select the rectangle up here and just kind of create a box about like that and set it to subtract and we can go ahead and just adjust these as we see fit we're just adding in some cinematic letterboxing and click away so now we have Doctor Strange he kind of activates the mandala it pops up and fades away so if you wanted to you could go to layer new adjustment layer and we could throw in let's say a tritone effect onto the adjustment layer and just dial it into let's say about 80% just to give the overall scene just a little bit of a cinematic look. And I'm going to turn off the proportional grid here and let's go ahead and preview our final result. Excellent. So as you can see, we've created this really, really cool Doctor Strange shield in only a matter of minutes. I can't encourage you enough to go download the free project file over at premiumbeat.com. And of course, if you're ever looking for the best royalty-free music or sound effects, go check out Premium Beat. We have thousands of exclusive tracks that you won't find anywhere else. This has been Caleb Ward. We'll see you next time.